In the middle of a forest clearing, the ground suddenly begins to move, and a man's hand appears from there. And then the whole man, wrapped in plastic wrap. Tearing the wrapping off and looking around at his burial site, he screams in horror. And just 24 hours ago, Miles Elliott was agonizing at work, unable to come up with anything worthwhile. As a result, his boss gives the project to his co-worker, the previously inconspicuous loser Dan. Dan makes a brilliant presentation, and in the evening the whole department celebrates his victory. And there the man confesses to Miles that he owes it to a place that hides behind the signboard of Top Happy Spa, but in fact, changes the whole life of the client, for the better. Miles listens to his story with disbelief, but takes the Salon's business card nonetheless. When he arrives home, he swoops onto his wife's table as usual and hears her voice from above, but by the time he gets to bed, the woman is already asleep, turned away. In the morning, his phone alerts the man that he has an appointment at the family planning center today. Upon learning that Miles is again putting off going to the clinic, his wife warns him that her patience is not infinite. So Miles dials the spa's phone, where he's given the address and the amount, $50,000. Withdrawing all his savings, the man goes there, but after seeing the unpresentable look of the place, he's ready to leave when he sees a man come out of the salon who encourages the newcomer and drives away in a fancy car. Miles enters the office, where he's greeted by two Chinese doctors, who are ready to improve him to the unthinkable. Miles is led into the operating room, his clothes are changed into diapers, and manipulation begins. Suddenly something goes wrong, the Chinese swear nervously while Miles quietly falls asleep on the table. Then he wakes up in the middle of the woods in a shallow grave. A man in a diaper walks to town for six hours because no one wants to put a naked man in a car. Finally he reaches his house. But once inside, and as usual bumping into a table, he hears a man's voice in the upstairs bedroom. A man's voice. Miles grabs his axe and waits for the stranger to come downstairs. He pounces on him, but suddenly finds that he is fighting himself. The men begin to figure out what happened. Miles 1 remembers falling asleep in the spa and waking up in his grave, and Miles 2 remembers waking up at the spa and going home. The men realize, we have to go to the spa. On the way they try to catch each other's memories, but they are exactly the same. Once inside the salon, they learn there has been a terrible mix-up. Miles 1 had to die because his clone, Miles 2, has come to life instead. The men are at a loss. How are they to live now? To which the Chinese offer a discount if they bring the next customer. The action rolls back to when Miles Stu wakes up on the desk at the spa. He feels great and drives to the office. But on the way he comes to marvel at his surroundings. The man runs into a cornfield where he meets its owner. He asks the farmer about his produce with interest and then he harvests the crop. After receiving fruit and vegetables as payment, Miles still makes it to work and finds himself in a meeting, where Dan is presenting a new project about cellular communication. But Miles interrupts a co-worker and suggests that the product be looked at from a different perspective. As a result, the development is assigned to Miles. In the evening, his wife is astonished to find her husband in the kitchen making dinner. At the table, he inquires about her business, compliments her and promises to go to the family center tomorrow. And then he goes down to get water and runs into himself. After going to the spa and finding out he's a clone, Miles too gets desperate. Stopping at a roadside cafe, Miles tries to convince the clone that it's all for the best. Now he can do what he previously wanted to do, go on a trip for example. But it requires money. And so the men return to the spa. Threatened with exposure, they return the amount paid by Miles, having beaten out moral compensation as well. After saying goodbye and picking up Miles' papers, Clone goes to the airport. But on the way, his wife calls him, and after talking to her, Clone asks the cab driver to turn around. When he arrives at his house, he wistfully watches the family dinner, and then goes to the house and gets the spare key. After saying goodbye to the copy, Miles heads to the office. He thanks God for giving him his life back. But only until he enters the premises. He is literally swamped with work, and his boss reminds him of a presentation tomorrow. In the evening, Miles tries to make sense of Clone's ideas, but he can't figure anything out. He realizes he can't do without the double, so he dials the number. Suddenly, he hears a ringtone behind the door. He opens it and sees a clone behind the threshold. They go to a cafe, and Miles still asks Clone to finish the project he started, while he takes a little break and finishes the play started. But there is one condition, not a word to Kay. In the morning, 
Miles sees off his wife and then Clone, who has settled into his office, and sits down to work. In the evening, Clone tells him that the project is all his, and the secretary gives special signs of attention. All the days that follow are repeated, until one day Miles has too much beer and can't go to a party thrown by his wife. So Clone goes instead. Miles spends the entire evening watching his doppelganger tell funny stories he was once good at and sees the eyes Kate looks at him. When the evening is over, Clone and Kate go up to the bedroom, Miles switches places with the doppelganger, and the night's pleasures go to the lawful husband. The next morning, Miles goes to visit his half-sister and learns that Clone has already been here, met a woman, and really liked her. When he returns home, he finds his play redone. He expresses indignation to Clone, but he reminds him that his story belongs to him, too. Enraged, Miles takes up the project. In the morning, he goes to present it to the client, but he can't dazzle with an explanation, so he simply offers to watch the presentation. The customer approves of his idea and advises him to stick with the lie until the end. The manager announces a superstar party and Miles goes to the restaurant. But on the way he notices a stakeout and when he tries to find out who is following him, he gets his car damaged. Miles arrives at the restaurant and sees his clone with Kate in his arms among his colleagues. And coming up close, he finishes the story. The action jumps to the moment when the husband goes to bed with Kate and Clone agonizes all night because he feels like a married man who's been cheated on by his wife. That's when he rewrites Miles' play. Later, he leaves the study when the spouses are no longer home, but at that moment, Kate returns. She congratulates him on getting the project and asks him to hurry, they're expected at the restaurant. This is where the meeting at the restaurant happens, where Clone introduces his twin brother to his colleagues and Kate leaves to have a showdown at home. She is furious when she finds out what happened, and she understands why her husband has changed so much lately. The woman asks Clone to leave the house. The men rent an apartment for Clone and he moves out. But at night he gets very bored, he constantly thinks of Kate. So for the weekend, he goes to visit his sister, who advises him to pay attention to other women. Here Clone remembers his secretary, with whom he soon finds himself in bed. The man is dumbfounded by the rapidity of their relationship and realizes that this is not his option. He goes to the Elliot home and cuts off a strand of hair from the sleeping Kate, then goes to the spa. But upon hearing his request to create a clone of the woman, the Chinese lose even their accent and kick the guy out the door. At night, he turns to dating sites, and after describing the woman he wants, he gets one option, and it's Kate. The action goes back to the time when the couple was expecting their firstborn, but it didn't happen. Kate had a miscarriage. That's when she realized that she really wanted to have a child. To comfort the woman, Miles takes her to the suburbs and offers to change her apartment for a house. He shows the room and the future nursery. The couple settles into their new home and one day Kate finds a nightstand at a rummage sale, which she takes into her home. Time passes, Kate works as an architect and often visits clients' homes. Soon she notices that she begins to tire of the wild ideas of some individuals. And soon she experiences another disappointment. The baby didn't work out again. That night, Miles was at a company party and a frustrated Kate starts a page on a dating site. She starts getting messages but the woman ignores them for now. One day she is met by what she thinks is her husband while cooking dinner, and his subsequent behavior leaves the woman stunned. It all lasts until the moment when Clone shows up. After such a shock, Kate decides to get inseminated by another donor, but learns that her account is empty. After all this blowback, she opens the messages for the first time and goes on a date with her own husband's clone. Meanwhile, Miles receives a package from an advertising client and Kate informs him of an upcoming conference to be held in another city. She no longer holds a grudge for the money, for the new Miles has returned it, and she wants her nightstand back. To make it up to her, Miles goes to the family center and turns in his fertility material. And later, he learns that his latest project is being nominated for a Golden Pencil Award, which completely throws him off balance. Miles goes to the presentation venue, but hides from management, hoping the clone project will fail at the vote, and he bumps into a farmer, whose doppelganger was picking vegetables. It's time for the presentation of the project, but Miles isn't there, and the audience is shown the presentation. 
A discussion ensues, from which it becomes clear that the project is failing. This is when Miles realizes that his work may be X. He ponders how to rectify the situation, and in the meantime, he looks at an advertising project about a chicken farm. Then he rushes to the bar, where the residents of the country are having a recess to discuss the project, and amuses everyone with stories from the life of his grandfather, the farmer. And at the same time, he drowns the competitor's ads. In a vote, the clone project wins. The next day, Miles gets a phone call from his secretary. Why didn't he show up for work again? And by the way, he wasn't that good in bed at all. The man is completely stunned and rushes to call clone. But when he walks out the door, he finds a parcel in which he finds the carcass of a pig from an advertising client. Trying to drive out of the yard, he sees clone's car behind him. Some time ago, clone rehearses his meeting with Kate, but is at a loss when she finally arrives. They have a good time and the woman leaves. But a while later, Kate knocks on his door. She brings a nightstand, which always happens to be in Miles' way. She also invites Clone to go with her to a conference. Clone leaves work and they hit the road. The pair make their way to the room and as soon as they enter, throw themselves into each other's arms. In the morning, Clone brings breakfast to bed and tries his best to please his girlfriend but he senses that something is going wrong and starts looking online for answers. As a result, he suggests that Kate take a jog after work and shows the beauty of the architecture. He also suggests a flight to Paris, and in fact, we can start all over again. In the evening, Kate apologizes for her uninspiring behavior. At this point, their wedding song begins to play. The clone insists that Kate come out to dance, but the woman forgets some of the moves and he comforts her with the fact that it's been a long time. As evening falls, Kate suddenly speaks out. She does not feel united because he, though he remembers the journey they have taken, has not felt all the problems and joys they have experienced. And this really irritates her. The meeting is a mistake. Clone returns home and goes to the bar, where he meets Dan. He announces his dismissal and wants to put up a real fight, but Clone promises to show him something unbelievable so he takes Dan to the memorial glade. He orders him to dig, and he's horrified to find the bodies. The last one he discovers is himself? The clone explains what the spy is really doing. Dan can rejoice that at last he's alone. A colleague advises him to get rid of the loser. So the man goes to the store and buys items to bury the body in a gun. Then he drives to Miles' house, where he sees the man being pushed into a van and taken away. Lucky Clone goes to the house, where he tries to become like Miles. Meanwhile, the real Miles is brought into some kind of room, where milk suckers are installed. It turns out that America has this rule for factories. Where more than 50 people work, there must necessarily be a breastfeeding room. He was arrested after tracing a call about cloning violations. Miles recalls threatening the Chinese with exposure and then dialing the Secret Service phone number. He impersonates his non-existent brother, Elliot's twin, and this is punishable, by law. The man is tested with a detector, but the questions are so strange that Miles fails. Then it turns out that the machine is broken, which infuriates the agent. Miles shows his appendicitis scar as proof. Clone doesn't have one. The agents leave to check his medical records, and Miles remains locked up. Feeling thirsty, the man pulls out bottles of breast milk and reads magazines for young mothers. Finally, he is released, as the case falls apart, due to a flawed cloning law. On his way out the door, Miles gets his test results from the family center. All his vitals are normal. He returns home, where Kate is waiting for him. Miles apologizes for his behavior in recent years. He turns on their wedding song, and the couple dances, easily remembering all the moves. Kate then confesses where and with whom she has been these days. Miles grabs an axe and drives to Clone's house, but going inside, he suddenly sees a gun, picks up and the action rolls back as Clone decides to take the place of his kidnapped doppelganger. He rehearses his transformation, and when he's ready to meet Kate, he hears them talking to her husband downstairs. Then he watches the couple dance deftly. A frustrated Clone slips out of the house. Back in the apartment, he tries to kill himself with the gun he bought, but he lacks the resolve. At this point, a call comes in from Miles. Clone realizes Here's a chance to die at the hands of another man. He leaves the gun on the nightstand. Miles enters and grabs it and points at Clone's chest. But he doesn't dare shoot either. 
the men get into a fight, smashing everyone around them. Miles stumbles over the bollard again and smashes it with the axe. Then he hands it to Clone to finish the job. When all that's left of the bollard is Debris, Clone provokes Miles and he grabs a pillow and strangles the doppelganger. But realizing Clone is not breathing, he pumps him out. Lying on the floor, the men apologize to each other. That's when Kate enters the room. She realizes she's staying with Miles. But more importantly, she's pregnant. And which one of them is the father? It is impossible to find out. The woman embraces both men. They're having a baby. Comedy, in which serious questions are raised. Except that someone has to show up to show your own faults.